Our final speaker for this session is Liam. At 15 years of age, Liam brings a wealth of experience to this year's Kid X Plus event. Liam attends Jakarta School for Autism, is an active member of the Scout Movement and has a passion for games and Lego. During his involvement with Kid X, Liam has been exploring what it means to be neurodivergent um, and he's here to present his Smash Hits workshop, um, which will illustrate that we don't all think the same. So please put your hands together for Liam and his presentation. Hi, my name is Liam. I am neurodiverse. When someone is neurodiverse, they think differently to others. Some of the challenges I face being neurodiverse are difficulties with controlling my emotions. So when you get upset, you, you can end up feeling different things, such as, I'm sorry. Okay. I can find it hard to control my anger when I lose to a video game. I can get upset, I can become such, I can become really noisy. So, and it can annoy other people. Also, I have a, I also have difficulties with handling loud noises because when you're in a disco or something like that, it could be really noisy. So you can end up plugging your ears or you end up walking out, something like that. When someone puts their music up really loud, it really hurts. It takes me longer to write certain stories or come up with different things, such as... So such as when I'm doing my English, like writing up certain things, I can't think of certain things for my story, or well, it's kind of really frustrating, which is again, that leads into certain emotions. And then other people with neurodiverse get frustrated, they ended up flipping tables around, which is what I've seen in my school. And there's some kids with neurodiverse that don't know any better. Like some touch people inappropriately, some be really noisy, some run around the room, some have difficulty speaking saying certain words, sometimes even reading. And also, as I'm doing my speech today, I find it scary and nervous, such as when talking now. It's like it takes me longer to process and certain stuff and all that. Hmm. And this is what I mean when I'm controlling my emotions. It's not easy, it can be. Like, it, it makes things a hundred times harder. And if you're dealing with things on top of that, that can be really annoying. And when, you're, when you have neurodiverse, it doesn't go really noticed in school. People think you're a normal person. They can do anything and all that. Which can be really annoying. I expect better from the schools, even special schools. That's just that. Like, they don't hold up for other people. My teacher, she just slams us with homework, even though it's not a lot. But still can be really difficult. And sometimes when you're out in public, people think you're a different person, you don't, you can't do anything such as, well, let's say you're out in public and you're out in the supermarket and, well, you're trying to decide, or you're trying to pick out something or you're just really loud and all that. Because I know a couple of kids, like Peter, like he can talk, he's shaking his hands around, he doesn't know any better. Um, people look at him and think, well, what a weirdo. Sorry to say, I'm trying not to offend anyone. And sometimes, and kids like me with autism can only work for 30 minutes to an hour. And that becoming really fidgety and such and all that. So that can also be a bit of a problem when you're in class. Yeah. Also, when you're doing work, if something's really hard, you can get upset. That's what I've said. And by the way, with neurodiverse, it can, there's a lot of people with neurodiverse nowadays than it used to be. Yeah. And also it can be hard for people with neurodiverse to socialise. So saying you're trying to join a friendship group, you don't know what to do with neurodiverse. Saying if you, so if you want to join someone with neurodiverse, or if you want to join a friendship group, you, you like don't know what to say, what to do, or what even the steps even to get in to a friendship group. Like for someone like me, I'm a very quiet person, and out in this, and out in this which can... Again, people don't know it's a frustrating thing. Hmm. Yeah. 
like somehow you don't know how to communicate with other people. You can also, if you're leading, it can make it really difficult. Yeah. And also, something about, I also am dyslexic as well. Now, with dyslexia, you can mix up, it's basically a disability, where if you're spelling certain words, you mix up different letters, put them back to front. It can be frustrating because you want to spell it and, well, makes you feel like you can't really do it. Like, I do feel I don't have really much confidence myself. I doubt myself a lot. That can, that can be really difficult. And also, there's people trying to tell me to be my, do my best and all that, but I don't always find that easy. So even doing this conversation today. Mm. But also, when you have like autism, that it can give you a really good imagination. Just remember, people with disabilities do have a really good imagination and should be heard. This game today, I'm going to get to my workshop sort of things. This game will challenge your thinking and, and your processing speed. In this game, it's called the flow of problems. Oh, I'm not speaking to the microphone, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> my microphone's not working. That's a, it works on here, but it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. So how this game works, we're all going to stand in the circle probably over, over there, see where I'm pointing to. Yep, and Matt's got the ball. Yep. So this game, I'm going to throw the ball to whoever I throw the ball. I'm going to make up a problem. It could be anything such as, oh, a meteor has hit, hit your roof of your house, or it could be your horse has escaped out of it, jumped out of his pen, is running loose. So we'll get the gist. Yep. Any questions about the game? What, what happens after you've thrown the ball to me and given me uh, you, a oh, You can throw it back to the next person. Oh, by the way, 15 seconds to think. I have not thought of that. Just so you know. Just so, so we, you know. we, we have to think up some kind of solution to the Yes. Yep. And remember, many solutions will be different to others. All right. All right. I'll try not to throw it. So every time I seem to throw, I just throw. Not good catches. Yeah, yeah, I seem to break. No, I, I don't want to break the glass. I will glass. say, Liam's nearly taken my shoulder off a couple of times while we're practicing. All right. Okay, well, it appears it appears some donkey got in your car and has just has driven off your car. What do you do? Driven off of my car. Yeah, he's just driving your car happily. Remember, like in the Ghostbusters oh, film, there was a ghost. <laughs> okay, throw it to the next person. I've got the next problem. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> okay. By the way, apparently, what's your name? Uh, David. Steven does not have a phone. Or well, his phone's made out of paper. There you go. Oh, that sounds like a great idea to me. Um, mm. I might tell a story about that one day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ooh, right. Okay. Now, now that this thing of car's gone, now, now it's just now it's gone on to a ramp. It's now going into the air. Suddenly, now the donkey is now going in somewhat, almost going into space. What do you do? How are you going to catch it? Get it down. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, the camera, it appears, the camera has broken down. It's saying, oh, I'm sorry, I'm back, but we're out of serv no service. Come back in the next three hours. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm going to run to the most trustworthy person I know, go to their house, and I'll contact Natalie and ask for her advice. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like right. Natalie needs the ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, but the call line is now is gone. It does not exist. It's in trouble. It's in the past. It's now 2030. What do you do? And the car's still up in the sky. Yes. <laughs> we've just somehow traveled. We've, we've somehow traveled in time. Get in touch with Elon Musk, <laughs> and I'm going to get a rocket, um, one of his ones that doesn't blow up. <laughs> like the Teslas. <laughs> uh, the, there's one problem. Elon Musk does not want to help unless he gets millions and billions of dollars. It's like, the, it's like the money economy thing. Really big problem. I 
contact Bill Gates and ask him to help me build the rocket. Okay, throw it on to the next person. Okay. I'm sorry, but Bill Gates does, uh, does Bill Gates is too busy to contact you. To contact Tommy, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do? Oh god. <laughs> it's okay, you've only got fifteen seconds. <laughs> Okay, so on to the next person. Oh. Okay. Come on, Liam. Triple, I'm um, sorry, but the tr instead of triple zero, it's now 666. She does not know the number. So what do you do? Uh, well, if it's 666, then I think I'm probably going to have to go and visit my favourite witches next door <laughs> uh, and see yeah. if they've got the special phone card that can get yeah. me through to the people. Uh, Matt, can we throw it to someone that hasn't had a chance? Three, okay. Three yeah. Okay, now yeah, that's over. But the problem is, Matt is one of those old telephone things. You know where you turn them around, but he can't. But the numbers changed again. It just the amount, the numbers just disappeared. He's lost. His, Matt's lost his memory, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I will try and find a phone book that could tell me the correct number to call. Okay, go on to the next person. Okay. The phone, the donkey has eaten the phone book. <laughs> what do you do? So hmm. this is going to be slightly tragic, but I'm going to put my hand down the donkey's throat. <laughs> and I'm going to take out the leftovers of the paper and piece it back together. All right, last one. All right, throw on. This will be the last one. Okay. The donkey is now, some, the donkey's now biting on, um, um, I've forgotten your name. I'm, 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 Re. Re. Yeah. It's now a button on, attached its mouth onto Re's hand. What do you do? Um, sit back and laugh. <laughs> sit back and laugh. Okay. The point is that now. Thanks for playing. I hope you had fun. I hope we've all had some good laughs. Just remember, it takes someone that has autism or neurodiverse. It takes longer for them to process than others. It's hard for them, it's harder for neurodiverse people to manage their emotions. So just be patient. That's what I can say. And just be you with them. It also takes you longer for neurodiverse people to work, and they can't work as long as others. It also takes longer for neurodiverse, to, neurodiverse people to make a decision. I'm sorry if I didn't mention that. I just get nervous. No. It can be harder for kids with neurodiverse to make friends, which again, I do admit, the school company could do better with all these sort of things, because it does go really unnoticed. Yeah. Here, you know, it's harder for neurodiverse such as to communicate different ideas, because they're probably quiet and they don't really want to talk it out out loud. Very different to some others. Here are some tips to help neurodiverse people. Hmm. Number one, when neurodiverse people lose control of their emotions, such as get upset, get angry, or get cry, get upset, it does happen. They cry or do sort of things. It's very unpredictable. Um, take them out for a walk or play a game for them. Just have some fun. Really, it's it'll be a distraction for them, and they should they should you know, they should get over it fairly. Soon, it could take longer again, just remember. Yeah. Now, if they're getting fidgety and all that, again, it's better as a teacher to just say, just have recess or all that, something like that. Again, VHE, you're better off taking them outside for a tramp to trampoline or something. That is something for that. Yeah. yeah, and if they're talking too fast, what I mean with communicate, that's what I was meant to say. Just ask them to slow down and ask them what they're trying to say. That's the easiest thing you can do. Now, the thing is, for the fidget box, I would say make a well, a toolbox or something like that. So like, with their own fidget toys. Is this, it's really not much there. Yeah. yeah. Now, no, now, another one would be if you're at a party and they find it too loud, the best thing to do before coming to the party, make sure you have some headphones or something, or make sure there's a place for them to go outside. If, there's, if you don't have any of that, or there's actually dancing that, 
I just do not, I highly suggest don't bring them there because it's just really noisy and all that. Yep. Yeah. Now, I hope you all have a better understanding of neurodiverse. And I hope we can have a more neurodiverse in the future where we have finding a front runners that can breathe ice and fire. One sec. Sorry about this. And hopefully that that exit and and remember to be patient. And a neurodiverse people need more help than others. Eventually they will do the work. They'll eventually make a decision like such as what you're gonna have for dinner and eventually and and they are still normal people like us. But again, they have a really good imagination and they do have more other ideas like us. There's a lot of us with neurodiverse now. And then there is. Thank you for listening.